Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jay Turla, and I'll be talking about Bug Hunter's Guide to Bashing for Car Hacking Bug Bash or Contest. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I'm Jay Turla or Shipcode, um, Jetman, and Rootcon. Uh, I'm a security ops manager from the Philippines at Bug Crowd. And I'm a I'm also a Rootcon goon, which is a ha hacker conference in the Philippines, and also its CFP review board. Uh, I'm not the author of Turla Malware, despite my uh, family name. I'm not even Russian. I'm Filipino. So um, I'm also one of the main organizers for the Car Hacking Village in Rootcon and the Philippines, or Car Hack Village PH. So I, I've also contributed to Metasploit, uh, some auxiliary and exploit modules. So from time to time before, I contributed some modules. And actually, the last module that I've contributed is related to car hacking or the MSF hardware bridge, which you could use for, you know, hacking your car. So um, about this topic, it's actually not a mental health topic. So it's, but um, the purpose of this is to encourage other bug hunters, uh, especially application security hackers or researchers um, to hack cars, you know, to invite them that uh, they are also welcome to try out car hacking, even though they might only know web or mobile hacking. So there are tips and tricks that I'll be showing showing in the presentation and also some preparations to do for day zero, which is uh, a day before the event or the bug bash or the contest. So there are also some tips and tricks to focus for the bug bash and also to clear out misconceptions that car hacking bug bashes are not just for hardware and car hackers, right? Like I said, there, uh, there will be tips and tricks, but there will be no demo uh, for NDA purposes because uh, some of the demos usually for, you know, bug bashes uh, have NDA. So, and lastly, um, it's more about my experience as a triager for car hacking bug bashes. So my experience really, I've learned a lot from my experience as a car hacker myself and as the one who triage bugs that were submitted to a bug bash uh, where the company that I work with. So, yeah, as a summary, it's really how to succeed in, in a car hacking bug bash, phone to own, um, any hacking contest that involves hacking cars. And as what you can see from the picture, uh, you got Spectres and Ian Sabor or Mincinet and some of the guys that you may be familiar with who are in the car hacking village or car hacking bug bashes. And the guys that, that you can see in the picture are actually successful and being able to hack some of the components of the vehicles or some of the uh, scopes of the of the bug bashes. So the, this picture tells collaboration between teams, real. All right, so this is a sample picture of the car hacking bug bash sample payout. So two years ago, we've actually paid 224,000 US dollars and you can see some of the top uh, car hackers. The private user that you can see is uh, Rank One, and um, he chose to be anonymous. But if you go to the car hacking village, you might be familiar with him. I just don't want to, you know, spoil the fun of, you know, challenging you who that guy might be, or uh, maybe you want to guess him. So, but he's really a good car hacker. And then this is a sample clippings that I got from ZDNet from the phone to own contest. So 
as what you can see, a researcher duo who hacked Tesla car win the competition's overall standings. They also get to keep the car. So imagine that. Uh, Team Fluorescent made up of Amat Kama and Richard Zhu hacked the Tesla car via its browser. They use a JIT bug, GIT bug in the browser renderer process to execute co code on the car's firmware and show a message on its entertainment system or infotainment system. As per the rules announced last fall, the duo will now gets to keep the car. So, which is very interesting, you know, if you also get the car itself from the car hacking bug bash. So, they also receive 35,000 uh, 35, US dollars as a reward. So, aside from the car, they also get 35,000 US dollars, which is really good. So, I guess this might you know encourage some other hackers to hack cars as well so the question now is what if i am not a car hacker yet what if i'm still starting what if i want to start in hacking cars so no need to worry about that i got you bud uh first of all my favorite book about car hacking is the car hackers handbook a Guide for the Penetration Tester by Craig Smith. Um, you could also go to the online version, which is for free. But if you want to buy the ebook or the paperback, um, it's on Amazon or other um, bookstores that you could actually buy. I got the paperback myself, and uh, it has a sign from Craig Smith. So Craig Smith is really a good guy, and in fact, I've learned a lot from his book itself. There are also some good car hacking resources, which I want to reiterate. If you want to start your car hacking journey or your, if you want to prepare for a bug bash, um, the first one is, of course, the NanoCan, which is you know a $5 car hacking or canvas hacking tool that you could actually solder or play with. Uh, I actually got like a lot of PCBs of them, and also I also got my own, which I soldered. And also, Mintinet gave me the his version from a conference in B sides. I forgot the name, but I got that one. And then, if you just go to his GitHub link, you can see the uh, some of the sketches and also how to create the PCB or replicate the PCB. And then there's also a link from the carhackingvillage.com about getting started with car hacking. It's pretty much like how to um, get started with the can utils and you know some techniques that you could use with the can utils like can sniffer, um, uh, can gen, and also some of the can util tools. And then, of course, um, another tutorial by Ian Sabor on a conference, Canvas Basics with Hands-On Fuzzing. Uh, the reason why I reiterate this because Ian Sabor simplified it and also because um, he has a good hardware to practice with in that talk. And many of you may not know, but Ian Sabor is one of my mentors for car hacking as well. And then next up, we have a curated le list of awesome resources, uh, books, hardware. Uh, utilities, tools, people to follow in the car hacking or automotive, automotive security field. And then, of course, uh, because car hacking also made an inspiration to me to start car hacking, uh, to start hacking cars, I mean. Um, car Hacking Village videos, it's in YouTube as well. So you could visit that one. And, of course, if you are in a hacker conference, please do visit It's Car Hacking Village. There are a lot of hacker conferences right now 
that have car hacking villages. Um, in fact, even in uh, in my country, we started a car hacking village. We started from start. We've got simulators, um, some um, virtual virtual boxes for running virtual cans, and also some instrument clusters and some ECUs that they could play with. And in other countries as well, they've really beefed up their car hacking village. In fact, some of the uh, conferences right now have their own cars that they want to show for car hacking or for other people to play with. Um, I myself, I got to play, I think that was like four years ago or three years ago with with a car that was presented in the car hacking village in DEF CON before. And then there's also a good link, Adventures in Building a CAN Bus Sniffer, uh, from Tech Maker UA, my friends, Fronders, and uh, the guys from Tech Maker UA, they are also very good uh, car hackers. I've seen them how they hack. Uh, I've seen how they got uh, some good prices and rewards for their uh, hacks that, that they did on a car hacking bug bash. And the technique is, you know, uh, understanding the CAN bus. And also, it's all about teamwork and collaboration. And then next is um, really how I started back in the day. The first thing that I did, it's really about baby steps. And I think you can also do it as well. First thing that, 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 that I did, the first thing is, of course, uh, playing with my infotainment system of my car and I was able to you know uh, create my own POC and being able to execute command injection on the infotainment system via the universal serial bus or USB port and then from the left side I started with playing with an instrument cluster which was given to me by uh, Mintanet and then I used Nanocan and other SLCAN devices to play with it. Also, uh, the second cluster that I played with was a Mazda instrument cluster, which I myself and my friend, you know, play with. And it was really fun. So I learned a lot from that experience. So I know that a lot of guys started with virtual CAN based on the talks that I've seen from other countries. I would, ad I would really advise to start playing with an actual instrument cluster or, you know, hook it up with an ECU or play with your infotainment system. But uh, you must know the risk of it. And then, of course, like I said, there are some simulators that you can play with. Uh, you've got the UDS simulator by Craig Smith. You have the ICM simulator by Craig Smith. And also, you've got, um, there are actually hardwares that you could buy for an ECU simulator, which you can see from the left side of the screen or the picture that you can see wherein it has um, protocol. And then you can see that the mileage is off. So, this is actually a sample ECU simulator that I bought from Taiwan, and I bought it from Tindy. It's not really much of that you can play with, but it's a good thing to start with. So, but if you want cheaper one, I would really advise instrument cluster, which costs like twenty dollars, thirty dollars, or forty dollars. And if you want to have your own ECU kit, it just costs like $100 or $120 in eBay. There are a lot of things that you could buy on eBay. In fact, I've been collecting, collecting some vintage computers as well from eBay. Uh, UDS server is one of my favorites as well. It allows you to understand if you try to fuss the ECU. So uh, Craig Smith did a good one on this. And also... The instrument cluster simulator, these are uh, these tools are or utilities are available in GitHub for free. So, you know, you, you might want to check it out. 
So like I said, uh, my main inspiration really is the car hacking village. And um, when I first went to DEF CON, which was my first DEF CON was actually DEF CON 24. And well, I was just amazed. But this picture is actually from DEF CON 25 or 26, I think. Uh, I took the picture myself. And there are actually some um, good bench uh, test bench that you can play with, uh, setups that you can play with, so it's 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 really fun the, it, that if you visit the car hacking village. And then um, my advice, if you really want to start, you know, playing with the cannabis network or the other protocols of the car. Um, I would suggest to invest or acquire some tools required for interacting with CAN. So here are some of the samples that I have. Um, I have a value CAN. I have the CAN was deferred by TechMaker. I have um, Nano CAN and a P1 from uh, Machina P1. So there are actually other tools that I have in my box. So I have my own box, which contains some of the tools I used for playing with my car. So there's also some open source tools that you could uh, start playing with. So if you go to Car Hacking Tools by Jay Gamblin, um, it's on GitHub. If you just clone it, there are some tools that you could use with. It's a collection of scripts to help jumpstart car research and hacking. And all the scripts are designed to run on Ubuntu, Debian, and Kali. And then from the right side of the screen, you can actually see some of the tools that are in there. And then uh, from what I usually see from car hacking bug bashers, these are the common enterprise tools on the block that they use. So we have the Vehicle Spy and Canoe, right? I don't want to promote the product, but you know, I want, uh, for me, these are also good enterprise tools and I've seen a lot of guys using them as well. And then, um, like I said, car hacking bug bashes are not just for car hackers. It's also for hardware hackers uh, IOT hackers, and if you're good in network pen test, uh, you could also bring some of the tools that you used for pe penetration testing. And um, I would like to reiterate that you need to prepare yourself and bring some of your hardware hacking tools or um, network hacking tools or pen test tools. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see from the box there that I have a pineapple. Uh, I also have the HackRF, um, Alpha, and also some Canvas hacking tools, and uh, Zigbee uh, device, and also um, some, you know, getting it, getting with hardware hacking to interact with the UART and some other hardware, uh, you know instances that you could play with. These are the sample ratings or common classification from bugcrowd.com slash VRT or the vulner vulnerability rating taxonomy. Um, I'm one of the guys who contributed to this one, which is actually open source. This actually serves as a guide and for car hackers about the priority of the vulnerabilities that you can submit to a car hacking bug bash or a contest. And so as you can see, the first, uh, the first one that you can see there is the P2 leakage and, or the PII leakage, I mean, I'm sorry about P2. And it's under P1, which is a critical vulnerability. And then if you have key fob cloning, if you could clone the key fob on the, from the RF hub, uh, we consider that one as a P1. And if you could execute um, command injection from the infotainment, the radio head unit, and then you are able to uh, 
go to the CAN bus, you, you do a CAN bus pivot or pivot. So that uh, we consider that one as a P2. And if there is no CAN bus pivot, just command injection, it's pretty much like P3. And there are also some CAN injections that you could refer to, take for example, um, the battery management system, the steering control, uh, the pyrotechnical device development tool, the headlights, the sensors. Uh, it's pretty much like P3 if you could interact with it. Um, we used to have this as P1, but um, we did some classification. We reorganized it with the classification together with our partner, and we decided that it would be a P3 based on the Terra or you know threat assessment that we have. But what remains is, of course, if you could, um, you know, do key fob cloning, uh, OTA firmware manipulation, that's P2, um, do a code execution, or a CAN injection from the RF hub that's considered as P2. So if you need to go to um, bugcrowd.com slash VRT, you are free to do so. It's free, open source. In fact, uh, any car hackers could also contribute to the GitHub so that they can suggest um, some of the attacks that can be uh, done from the car. Next up is, wait, what's this class classification? So I want to simplify it. The reason why we have those classification is because we want to assess uh, the attacks that are done. Of course, uh, we we used to have uh, an incomplete task of prioritizing car hacking bugs or automotive security bugs. But right now, um, with the improvement for the VRT for automotive security bugs, we've classified it based on um, the impact of the bug, the exploitability of the bug, the proof of concept that the hacker uh, presented um, the proximity of the attack and also the CIA triad. No, not the mafia, but it's the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So we also consider that one. Take, for example, the PII leakage. So, um, of course, the more ranking of confid confidentiality for that because uh, those are personable, identifi identifiable information. And this... Um, there are other things that we classify, and it's part of our threat assessment and remediation analysis, or Terra. So P1 is critical, and P4 is low. And if it's P5, it's pretty much not rewardable or out of scope for a car hacking bug bash. Here are some, some common checklists or common bugs or common issues. Um, the reason why I uh, put this one on, on the slide is, you know, to give some information about some of the common checklists or hacks uh, the car hackers do first before anything else. Um, one of the things that they do usually is to send messages from the dirty side to the clean side, and most of the, these are ready to ECU resets, uh, airbag deployment via the LBD2, for example, uh, infotainment, radio control, controls, etc., or radio head units. So if they could send messages from the dirty side to the clean side, that's something that they usually look for because they just don't know. Maybe they will get rewarded. And in fact, um, two years ago for this kind of hacks, uh, the rewards are pretty much like 25 thousand US dollars just for this um, you, you never know uh, you also get to find these kind of attacks but the problem is in a car hacking bug bash these are the most common ones that are found that means that um, it should be the first reporter who should be rewarded so the chances are if you are not fast enough to do this uh, someone could get uh, could beat you and your bug will just get duplicated, right? So it's pretty much like um, always create a better POC and then 
uh, submit it right away, okay? So you need to submit it right away with a good POC. Next is injecting disallowed messages in the CAN bus. So th th these are also some of the common things that they do. So they inject disallowed messages, which can or which can cause a denial service or interact with some of the uh, components or attack services of a car. And then, um, of course, th this one, uh, th uh, so far, uh, I've seen like two submissions on this or four submissions in previous uh, car hacking bug bashes. But these are actually known hacks. And I've seen uh, some friends at, from China who have actually submitted this one as CVs for other cars. And then, in fact, BMW has some CVs related to this one. And it, um, it's found by someone from... I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot. But it's a known company as well. But... Format string vulnerabilities to the infotainment radio head units uh, bl via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or radio. These are some of the common bugs. So, and also are very e easy to replicate, and also very easy to conduct. So, or you know, use as a proof of concept. So, if you take, for example, name your cell phone or your Wi-Fi to point. Um, Point zero zero or uh, percentage X, percentage X, percentage X, and then if you let your car connect to it and it costs a denial of service, so that's a sample of a format string uh, vulnerability or attack. And then we have um, no authentication at services for telematics, infotainment, infotainment, uh, radio hit units. So it could be that if you connect your car. Uh, to the internet or to your router or to your ISP. And then if you try to, you know, do a recon and use Nmap to scan for the services, some of the most common things that you could discover are um, no authentication when you do a telnet to one of the services. Like for example, on port uh, 23, which is, of course, a telnet. And then there are also some ports wherein if you just use Netcat, uh, you are taken to a shell right away. So those are some of the common uh, common things that are found. And if you're not fast enough, your bug will get duplicated. Next is denial of service on the CAN bus network using CAN bus floods, um, the firehose attack. So there are, if you could somehow cause a denial of service, um, it's also rewardable. But in some car hacking bug bashes or contests, it could be uh, out of scope. So you need to read the scope for that one. Uh, replay, relay, and roll jump attacks on the key fob. In most car hacking bunk bashes, they are considered as P5. But you never know. Maybe uh, in some contests, they are considered as P4 or P3. So, you know, maybe you might want to try your luck, but be sure to read the program brief if they are out, out of scope. And then OTA firmware manipulation, it's also one of the common bugs that are submitted. Um, key fob cloning, uh, source, code, source code dump, not, um, not just the ECU, but of course, some of the hardware for the infotainment system, the radio head unit, and other um, hardwares that are in there. Especially, for example, the security, security gateway, which are considered to be firewalls you know, for the cars. Then um, Bluetooth stack buffer overflow, which leads to remote code execution. Oh, I mean, to code execution. So uh, Tencent Security Keen Lab have a lot of proof of concepts on, on this from their blog. So if, if you want to visit their blog, they have actually good proof of concepts, uh, proof of concept about um, buffer overflows related to the infotainment system and other system as well. And then code execution via the USB drive, the SD card, SD drive, etc. So these are some of the common checklists or bugs. 
next up, of course, this is a sample uh, tip. Uh, if you can send any of these frames from the dirty side, so um, take, for example, the OBD2 or the infotainment system. If yes, it is considered as a P1 or considered as broken off or secure gateway bypass if there's an SGW or secure gateway. And then these scan frames, um, 7DF or 7E1, if you could actually do this, and then how do you know if it's successful? Uh, this should be the positive reply from the frame. So you have 025101, and the negative responses starts with 0 times 0, 03. And um, th this actually allows you to do ECU hard resets on the car. Yep, if we could do this on an OBD2 port, that's something that we, re we reward. And then if you could somehow interact with an authorized scan access, I got this picture from Black Hat. And if you could actually find some of the things, you know, an authorized scan access, and then you interact with it, you, you may never know what you can discover as well. This is a sample of a POC for a firehose attack. Uh, we're in a bash script. Uh, you send... Um, uh, the uh, arbitration ID 00 and the um, 00 data. So maybe you don't know that you could also perform can injection or denial of service. Next is um, one of the tools that I really like, which I discovered from the Car, Hack Car Hackers Handbook. Uh, if you are sad or if sad with you uh the the ids that you found uh, you could try or recon and do a U U uds discovery with carrying caribou it's open source and you need python 3 and make sure to install python can for python 3 so that it will work uh if you have problems with making it work just uh, message me on twitter uh I really like to play with it and, you know, I've fixed most of some of the people's problems with it, but it's really good. It's one of, it's one of my favorite tools for UDS discovery. And in fact, there are some, some of um, util, utilities you can do with uh, Karen Karibu. It's a car exploration tool. So you can do, uh, there's also a command that lets you do an ECU hard reset on it or interact with XCP. So might want to clone Caring Caribou right now. And then, of course, uh, people think that pff, Metasploit is, you know, nothing that you could play with for car hacking. But people are wrong about it. Um, if you go to uh, automotive, you use the command search automotive with Metasploit, you will find some uh, eight modules that are written geared towards car hacking. And of course, you need the hardware bridge server for it. And also the, uh, you know, you need to interact with a can to play with it so there, there's the can flood which can be used you know to perform uh denial of service on the can and then there's a module to probe different data points in a can packet um get the vehicle information such as the vin from the target module uh scan bus for diagnostic modules and then there there are you may you may want to consider it as an auxiliary module that allows you to um flood the temp gauge on a 2006 Malibu and maybe you don't know maybe you could also cause a dust if you try to work it work on it on some some of the cars uh, that you can play with and then there's a Mazda 2 instrument cluster accelerometer mover which I actually created and then um, this uh, the last one is uh, the PDT module, which allows you to check for prep the pyrotechnic devices, the airbags, 
battery clamps, etc. And um, it allows you to deploy airbags if it's vulnerable to the simple algorithm in unlocking the airbags through the can. So there's a good paper about it. In fact, if you use the info from the module, you will see uh, the actual PDF file that contains the research about it. So if you want to try playing with it, you can fire up your virtual can and then, you know, um, use the modules to see for yourself uh, some of the sample attacks, you know, in the CAN bus network. And here's a sample. I used the uh, CAN, uh, CAN flood and then just a sample on a VCAN zero, which is a virtual CAN. And when I tried CAN dump, these are some of the things that I can see from the dump of the CAN bus. So you can see that there are a lot of arbitration IDs and then some subsets of data or different kinds of data being thrown in. So that's just a sample. And you never know, maybe you could use it. There's also a good hardware hacking cheat sheet for hardware hackers out there. Uh, it's made by M. Aaron Magish. I saw this one in his Twitter. And I, I decided to place this one. Of course, credits to him. These are some of the things that you could play with. Um, if, if you have some, if there are some hardware that you could rip off during the car hacking bug bashes, which is actually true. There are some hardware that will be given to you that you can play with. So, you know, fire up some of your hardware hacking tools with it. And then um, there's a good guide, for example, um, there's a link on it from the Mazda Tweaks, which is on a Mazda infotainment system uh, with playing with and getting a shell. So you have the RXTX in the ground where to place it. So uh, this serves that you could actually play with some of the infotainment system because most of them are, have uh, UART on it or other hardware hacking for referrals. So this is one of the things that I would like to reiterate. Car hacking, bug bashes, is not just about IoT, hardware, radio, and CAN bus attacks. Web and mobile hacking are also essential skills. Uh, skills, I mean. Um, Android and iOS apps connected through telemetry or for interfacing with the infotainment. Um, these are some of the things that you could hack. Uh, update servers, firmware updates, cloud, for example. Um, you need to think how connected is the car. Does it have API endpoints? So how do you do that if you want to try it? So you need to do a recon and identify attack services that have web servers and APIs. And what you're going to do with it, of course, the OWASP top 10, right? because the OWASP top 10 is everywhere. So maybe there's a web server up or there's an API that your infotainment or one of the mobile apps that your car is connected to has, uh, it connects to a certain API. Maybe you could do SQL injection on the update server as well, or maybe there are some things that you could do with uh, the update server, Co command injection. So they are somehow could be part of the scope. And then web, web hacking essential skills. You have the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. Burp and OWASP is a friend. Um, you need to you know, try intercepting requests from the mobile app, uh, the update servers, and the PKI bridge. And I would highly recommend SQL PY Burp extension. It's a good tool for automating your SQL injection attacks in Burp. And Another thing that you could do is if you could check if you can manipulate some vehicle functions with unprotected APIs, All right? So these are the reasons why web hacking uh, is essential. Another thing is mobile hacking is also an essential skill. So you have the apps that you could interface with, you know, your vehicle. So 
especially with the infotainment system or the entertainment system. So you need to de decompile the binaries, the APK or the IPA. And then I would recommend Genie Motion for Android emulation and so that it's easier for you to intercept the request via burp proxy. And then another thing that you could check with is to check for possible clear text database storage, like the SQLite database. So if you could find um, information, that's actually one of the bugs that we are looking for. And then, yep, OWASP really applies to this as well because you can intercept the request from burp. And then ADB shell is love if um, there are some Android devices connected to the car, especially the infotainment system. So why don't you try to fire up ADB shell? And then always check for hard-coded API keys when you have a decompiled binaries for APK or IPA. You never know what you can find really. So the last one is to repeat and check how the app interfaces with the car. And if this is not enough, uh, go to the OWASP mobile checklist or top 10. There are some of the things that you can learn for mobile hacking, especially for AppSec hackers who are not into mobile hacking. So here's a sample, for example. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember the Nissan Leaf fiasco, but the problem with that is the VIN, the VIN was used for authorization purposes and controlling some of the features. Take, for example, the check climate control. So the whole API is authenticated and only required the VIN to target a vehicle. So the URL or the domain is redacted, but here is a sample um, request, a GET request, that if you have the complete VIN of the car, you could actually control some of the features of the Nissan Leaf, which is a hybrid, uh, which is an electric car. And this is a sample of being able to uh, do the check climate control, and then you are given with a response. And from this, you can see that the whole API is unauthenticated. Uh, if you go to the link below, credits to Troy Hunt, you can see some of the things that were done in assessment of this. So yeah, web hacking is, a, is an essential skill. Next up, what if you're in the event right now? Okay, what if you're in the bug bash right now? It's day one, you're scared, okay? Because you don't know some of the people, but eh, really most of the car hacking bug bashes, they really know the people but um, it's just that maybe some of the people, there are two or three or five people that are actually new to the car hacking bug bashes or new to car hacking. So, but car hacking is, a, uh, is really a small world because there are, um, in a car hacking village, I think most of the people that I met there, I have seen in some of the car hacking bug bashes as well or contests. Right, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to read the program brief or rules in the bug bash, all right? Take note of the scope of the program, and then um, you need to focus on the scope and exclusion of the program. Take, for example, these are the common ones that are out of scope. GPS spoofing, uh, denial of service via CAN injection. You know, I would like to reiterate that please don't uh, submit out of scope bugs if it's in the brief no need to submit about it you could get penalized for it so um, the program brief also contains some of the things that you may want to look for so it could be that the program brief would say that we want to look for firmware OTA manipulation how you could uh, reverse engineer the firmware. So somehow it also gives you an overview about what to hack, okay? It also contains, take for example, uh, we want our gateway to a bypass. Here are some of the things that you could do. So those are some of the things 
um, that you can read from the program brief. It also gives you somehow common attacks that you can do with a car. And then check on what security bugs are of interest to the program. So you have the authentication or firewall bypass, can injection attacks, code execution, and again, what can messages can you send from the dirty side? So these are one of the common ones. The program brief also has this kind of information. So that's why always read the program brief or the rules. So do you need more? Um, if you want more information, maybe you could ask the program owners or the ASE assigned. Maybe you could ask for DBC files, which are proprietary format that describes the data over a CAN bus, um, known issues, and vehicle network architecture. So in some cases, they, they, they would provide the vehicle network architecture. And in some cases as well, they could provide known issues that were submitted before, and maybe you could somehow create a bypass for it. If it's fixed, maybe create a bypass for it or submit it again and check if you could do uh, another technique related to it. Do you have friends in the event? If you're in the event, how about team up or collaborate? One of the things that I notice is some of the most successful or bugs that were submitted involve collaboration, right? There are, um, in fact, there's there was a team before. They were composed of, I think, more than five people, and they submitted more bugs, right, than other uh, than other um, than other players or than other teams. But you know, it's really good because it has something to do with collaboration, teaming up, and then you know they got some good rewards as well that they could you know just split up. So take for example, uh, they got a P1 and they're only two. So pretty much like what if they got 30,000 US dollars as a reward, they can split it up for 1,500 US dollars, all right? So it's all about collaboration. I've seen some good collaboration. And if you, want, if you have tools that are... Um, that you don't have, maybe you want to get that guy and collaborate with, right? And if you think that there is something that could be done with um, the radio and you don't have much information about the radio, but you know a guy that probably knows more about radio security, then maybe you could team up with that guy, all right? I've seen some people collaborating even though they don't know the person or they just heard of the person or they've noticed uh, that person playing or poking something during the car hacking bug bash, all right? Don't be shy. Make friends. So next up is how to write a good report, all right? Uh, you need to, to submit clear reproduction steps. This is a sample. So you need to describe the vulnerability, and you need to enumerate the replication steps. You need to make sure that it's easy to understand for the uh, triager or the one that will be handling the report. So, like for example, rename your phone to blah, blah, blah. Uh, connect your pair your phone to the infotainment via Bluetooth. Uh, use the navigation buttons to control the infotainment and it should remain stuck, with, which means you were able to break the infotainment system. And then um, provide another information. I also tried restarting the infotainment. And this does not resolve the issue. It only works fine after doing a hard reset, blah, 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 blah. And then make sure to submit a screenshot or a picture of the bug, right? If there is a picture, it's easier to reproduce as well. If you have a video, attach a video, all right? Don't let the triager uh, left in hanging when you submit a report. Right, make sure you include all the POC steps, easy to understand, pictures, and also videos. If you could reproduce a video, right, or also provide can dump logs. Okay, 
or logs for the attack. Right, so for anything else, I would like to give a shout out and credits to the Car Hacking Village community, uh, to Justin, um, to Craig Smith, who has been my inspiration, Ian Sabor, my mentor, Carfucker, whom I met uh, in a lot of events, also a very cool guy, uh, Will Corona, uh, Fronders, uh, the guys from TechMaker, ASRG. They have tons of good resources. ASRG Singapore, my friends as well. Uh, Spectres, um, I've met this guy, and you know he's a cool dude, and he has a cool team too. And then Jamie, who is my friend, and also to Semprex, the founder of Rootcon, who are my supporters in my car hacking village. And of course, to the ZDNet.com, wherein I rip off one of the articles for Ponto. So, shout outs to the to these, and I won't be in this industry, or I won't have this kind of resources without these guys and the link that you can see from there. So, if you have any questions, um, let me know. Uh, I'm in Twitter. Uh, you know, I will be seeing you all in DevCon. All right.